In this video we're going to complete example 2. It says here that we've got a block of land in the shape of a quadrilateral. We can actually see that on the right side. Its perimeter is made of four straight edges that connect at four vertices labelled A, B, C and O below. This one here again. Now a surveyor decides to stand at one vertex O. So this is, if we look on the right side, these are basically the same diagrams the one on the left sort of shows what the di what the surveyor sorry has measured. The surveyor stood here, okay, and the surveyor measured the distance and bearing to the other three vertices. And we can see that here. The surveyor measured the bearing from O to B at 112 degrees, and it was a distance of 205 meters. They measured another distance to A, which was 230 meters, and they've got the bearing there as well. And then they measured the distance to C and also put the bearing down. Now, it wants you to calculate the perimeter this time of the block of land. So we've got the one on the left, which is what the surveyor did, and the diagram on the right, which is what the block of land would look like from above. Now, we have some of the information already. We know that this side is 230 metres, and this side here has got to be 160 metres. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to calculate the length of the other two sides. And once we have that information, we can calculate its perimeter. So this side AB is, is the side we can see here. It hasn't been drawn in the diagram on the left. And the side BC also hasn't been drawn. It's, it's this side that should be here. So I reckon what we need to do is I reckon we're going to end up using the cosine rule. And we need to calculate some angles here. And it's going to be, I'll label it, we need to find this angle here. And we need to find this angle here. Usually the angles you need to find are the included angle. The angle in green is included between the sides 230 and 205. The angle in purple is included between the 160 and the 205 meter length side. Okay, so how are we going to find these angles? We're going to use our bearings, and I know that this first angle here has to be 43 degrees because of this bearing here. This bearing is measured from north. Okay, now some people, they make a big mistake, and they look at the green angle, and they go, oh, that's a bearing of 112 degrees, and they write 112 degrees there. That's not the case. I'm going to show you how to work it out. What we do is we go 112 minus 43 and we work this out. So bringing my calculator up, 112 minus 43 equals, and I get an angle of 69 degrees. That That is how big the green angle is. It's going to be 69 degrees because if you add the 43 degree angle to the 69 degree angle, it should equal 112. I'll even show you that. 43 plus 69 is 112. That's what we want. We want the two angles, the red and the green one, to add up to 112. Now let's focus on the purple angle this time. The bearing at C is 205 degrees. And what you want is you want the red angle, the green angle, and the purple angle to all add up to 205 degrees. So what we'll do for this one is we'll take our 205 degrees, subtract the green angle of 69 degrees, and subtract the red angle of 43 degrees. And that will give you what you want. 205 minus the 69 degree angle minus the 43 degree angle is 93 degrees. Okay, so the purple angle is 93 degrees. And if you added these three angles up, the red, green, and purple, they would all add up to 205 degrees. Excellent. So we got, we have the information that we need. Uh, it might help if we redraw our triangles somewhere else. So the triangle that has the purple angle, I'm going to redraw just here with my O, my B, and my C here. This is an angle of 93 degrees, and I have sides of 205 
meters and 160 meters. So I've redrawn this triangle. I've put a line along it and I've drawn it down here. All right. I also want to redraw this triangle with the A, the O, and the B. So I'm going to re. Whoop. Not working right now. So we've got vertex A connecting to vertex O, connecting to vertex B, like so. Here's my triangle. I know it's got a 69 degree angle, sides of 230 meters and 200. Five meters. What I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find two sides. I'm trying to find this side, let's call it X, and the other side we'll call that Y. All right. Uh, once we've found these two sides, we're going to be able to find our perimeter here. I'm actually going to rub out some things because it's going to throw us off. I'm going to rub out these vertices because we're going to use the cosine rule, and when we use the cosine rule, we want to label A, B, and C in particular spots. Uh, in order to calculate our lengths. So in case you've forgotten how to do this, you want to label it so that capital C for both triangles is right where the angle is, and then it doesn't really matter where capital A and capital B go. And after doing that, you then label your lowercase letters. Opposite capital C is lowercase c, opposite capital A, lowercase a, opposite capital B, lowercase b opposite capital C, lowercase c, opposite capital B, and then opposite capital A. All right. Now, I'm going to give myself some room here, rub some things out, because the cosine rule can take a little bit of working out. Cosine rule being c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos and capital C. All right. So let's refer, I'm just going to have a little reference here. Um, this, we'll refer to this as the first triangle and the second triangle. So we'll start with triangle one. Lowercase c is x, lowercase a is 160, lowercase b is 205, minus 2 times a being 160, I'm running out of room, but that's okay, times b, 205, times cos of capital C, capital C being 93 degrees. Okay, let's bring up our calculator. It hasn't told us to how many decimal places we're doing this. So that means we get to choose what we want to do. So we have 160 squared plus 205 squared minus 2 times 160 times 205 times cos of 93, making sure it's in degrees, equals, and that's quite a large one, 71,058, so it's approximately 71,058, uh, point, we'll go point 0.2, just one decimal place for now, we're going to leave that solution in the calculator, this is what x squared equals. So we need to figure out what x equals. x is the square root of this. And it's approximately that because we've rounded it. What are we going to get? Um, bring it up our calculator. Remember to just leave that number in there. Even though we've rounded it on paper, on the calculator we haven't. So the square root, and it will put that previous solution in there. And we're going to get 266. Um, let's do it to two decimal places, 266.57. And that's going to be in metres. That's, that's an approximate answer, but rather than writing approximately equal to, I'm going to write two decimal places next to it. Now, I definitely don't have room to do number two, so I'm going to create some now. All right, now looking at triangle two, um, in fact, we can make it so that we don't have to write down a line. Using the same formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos capital C. Now, lowercase c this time is y. We're looking at, in case you've forgotten, we're looking at this triangle here. Lowercase c is y here. 
y squared. Um, lowercase a is 205, so 205 squared. B, lowercase b is 230 squared minus 2 times a, 2 times 205 times 230 times, really running out of room, but I'm going to cheat. I'm going to drag this across to give myself some room. Uh, times this by cos of capital C, our angle, 69 degrees. Bringing up our calculator again. All right. 205 squared plus 230 squared minus 2 times 205 times 230 times cos of 69. It's in degrees, so we know it's going to be right. Equals, there's our solution, 61,130. Sorry, I think I've forgotten already. 130. I'm so forgetful. And I, uh, we'll do it to... Uh, last time we did it to one decimal place. So we'll do that here. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. Remembering this is an approximation. So to find y, we need to square root this value. That's 130.9. Um, but when we square root it, we're not going to put a rounded value in. We're going to put the original value there. We're going to click square root. It's going to automatically put that previous answer in there for you, giving us 247.25. 247.25. Um, and remembering that when we round to two decimal places, we don't need to write approximately equal to. We can write 2dp next to it which is quite fine. So we've got the length of these other two sides. Um, this side here is 247 point... I keep writing 5 instead of 2, don't I? 0.25 metres. Um, we can see that here. This is Y, so this is the side Y, and X is this side here. And X came out to be 266 0.57 meters. So if we want to find the perimeter, we're going to add all of these up. So we'll write P for perimeter, which is going to be 160 plus 230 plus 247.25 meters plus 266.57 meters. Bringing our calculator up, we're going to go 160 plus 230 plus 247.25 plus 266.57 equals and we get 903.82 now when I was working these out I was doing them to two decimal places because when I got to my final solution I was thinking well I'm going to round it to something less than that I'm going to round it to be honest to a whole number so we'll say that's 904 uh, meters okay and we'll say it's approximately equal to that anyway that concludes our video of just finding the perimeter for example two remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video